So there are four parts to our morning meeting. First is our greeting. So that's the first time students get to come together. Um, they hear their voices are heard. They greet each other, usually in a fun and creative way. After that, we have our share questions. So students are practicing speaking in front of a group and also um, asking follow-up questions and practicing that active listening. After that is our group activity, and that's a really fun time to build our sense of community. Students are practicing cooperation, they're included, and again, that sense of belonging. After that, it is time to transition from home into our classroom. So we will go ahead and read through the schedule, get them excited about anything they have to look forward to, and then by then, it's time to start our day. And so that's the end of our morning meeting. So morning meeting is a time that really creates a sense of belonging for our class. It really provides leadership opportunities for our students. They get to choose the components. It's also a time where they really get to practice social skills, such as listening to one another, making eye contact. It's a time that we can provide feedback for them in terms of speaking in front of others and projecting their voice. It's, it's really just a fun time that we feel is so important reinforcing really important social skills as well as academic skills. I work with our Cubs pre-K and kindergarten and it's a great deal of fun watching them build, explore, design, and develop a mindset where they can learn from the mistakes that they make. Um, most recently it's been really fun working with all three grades on a similar project where they're all working on making some snowflakes as the weather turns cold around here. Um, and this is a perfect example of how sometimes the very first thing you do doesn't work. So watching them make the folds and cuts and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Watching the cubs work with scissors, watching the uh, pre-Kers work on both folding and scissors, watching the kindergartners work with folding, scissors, cutting and creating it with, out of multiple pieces of paper so the project gets larger and larger. Um, and in all three cases, seeing them develop their both fine motor skills as well as their understanding of patterns, symmetry, and how a project can go step by step from something small and simple into something a little bit bigger and more complicated. Um, it's an example of how our program develops over time, um, but also how the students are developing both skills and mindset as they go. One of my favorite lessons throughout teaching is writing workshop and writing workshop and looking at writing personal narratives through the lens of a small moment. And what that means is that each student will take a moment from their lives and break it down into these itsy bitsy stuff. And that's to make sure that they include all of the emotions, the actions, everything that happened to them within this one moment in time. We teach them in a focus lesson at the beginning and then the students are able to go off and to be able to write it on their own and try it out. And we conference with students to make sure that they're implementing it. We use writing buddies and writing partners to be able to have them listen to on each other's writing and to be able to say, oh, that didn't really make sense to me as a reader. Would you be able to put this into your writing? And for them to understand that writing is all about going back and revising and looking at what the reader needs to, to be able to enjoy the story, to be able to engage in the story, to be able to see, hey, I'm an author too. My idea is always have a game with them. They create a safe space where they feel comfortable with a new language. For example, when we start the classes, we always start with a greetings, how are you? And then they answer uh, how, if they feel muy bien, or if they feel muy mal, or if they feel más o menos. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. Muy bien, Silvia, excelente. So this is a good beginning for the class, and then we will play a game, for example, with the colors or with a bingo. And because they are angry, uh, eager to, to beat the group, we engage with this new vocabulary. Good job! The idea is that they play in the safest space and they gain a new vocabulary in a new language without hesitance to use it. Usually when we walk around uh, in the hallways, they can tell me, hola, señora Ma, 
And it's, it's nice that I, they can take out of the class and they feel comfortable with the Spanish. And tell your partner your trait suggestion. Three, two, one. Okay, turn and talk to your partner. We work very closely as a class to identify character traits within a fiction text. This lesson built upon our understanding of thinking about story elements and thinking about the characters, the setting, problem solution, as well as the plot. For this lesson, we use a very familiar, well-loved text, Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. We use this text for several reasons. One, our students love this text. They really connected with the characters, Mr. Slinger and Lily. Secondly, when introducing a new lesson, we wanted to use a very familiar text so that students felt comfortable practicing this new skill of thinking about the character's traits. And finally, we didn't want our students on the rug for such a long period of time. We wanted to focus on just a specific portion of the passage to help teach this new lesson. What I love teaching most about literacy is that we don't have to spend time reading the entire passage of a book but rather we can focus on short selected pieces and allow students to engage in a text in rich and meaningful ways. Performing arts here at Beauvoir is a great way for students to experience singing, movement, and instrument playing, and lots of guided exploratory performing. The students start each day with the slide whistle where they have a fun experience getting their voices ready to sing. Woo, woo, woo! <laughs> we use movement pose cards to get their bodies in different positions so they feel more comfortable moving together. The scarves are a wonderful accessory that we use to find the flow or the short and choppy sounds of music with our bodies. The egg shakers are a really great instrument to hold physically in their hands so that they can find the steady beat along with the song and shake. The students here at Beauvoir love finding ways to be creative, to collaborate, and to make music together. At Beauvoir, we view our students as mathematicians. They are the ones making the connections between numbers and concepts, building and testing generalizations about how numbers work together. We use real life context as well as real life scenarios to provide our students with situations in which they encounter some really big ideas in math. How much money do we have? Benjamin? We have 11 cents so far. Could we make in pre-K, our students work to build foundational skills, counting in sequence, making comparisons between quantities, and beginning to understand that a number can be broken up into different parts. Our kindergarten builds on this, introducing the idea of units, that a 10 is made up of 10 parts. They use visual models like a math rack and 10 frames to help create a visual memory of numbers. In first through third grades, we build on that knowledge of units and breaking apart numbers to help students find more efficient strategies to approach addition and subtraction problems, as well as multi-digit multiplication. There is intentionality behind every strand in math that we teach, not only in the way that knowledge and skills build upon each other, but in the way that we support our students to develop their own identities as mathematicians. We might not know how to figure that out yet. I can try another strategy. What do I know? What am I missing? At Beauvoir, we value mistakes as opportunities for learning. We value risk-taking and asking questions. Our students know they're not alone in puzzling through a challenging problem. We learn through conversation and challenge each other. In third grade in particular this year, students have been focusing on their identity, learning about their identity through community. Um, we've read a lot of different stories about authors and their experiences with the traditional family dinners or different celebrations. Um, and students 
through that process began brainstorming about things that were important to them that they might want to write about. And then in this lesson, we read Thunder Cake um, to really see an example of that in action in the midst of their writing process so that they could write about their own, um, their own story and pull all of those things together using details, dialogue. Right. Elaborate, means? elaborate means to stretch it out and add more detail. Because you have a really good structure from like the beginning, I, know I can see like the beginning, the middle, and the end. You've got really great transition words. And integrating that writing component of what we um, already do here at Beauvoir with the diversity work and putting those two things together so they can share about themselves um, and their community in a way that's meaningful to them. My second graders have been using Indie Cars over the last few weeks, and Indie Cars are robots that are screen free and remote free. The Indie Cars use colored tiles, which represent an action, and when the sensor on the bottom of the car rolls over it, it will turn left or right or straight or forward. When exploring the cars, students use challenge cards to guide them through increasingly harder and harder codes that they need to do a lot of testing and reconfiguration with. I like to say mistakes and failed codes are always welcome in the computer lab. So reframing their mistakes is an opportunity for students to embrace messy learning within a safe space. Learning from failure is often the key to success and is necessary to improve their skills and just allow them to grow in, in a variety of ways. So what has to happen with the tiles? Yeah, you want to you wanna adjust them so that they're a little bit closer. I am passionate about guiding my students in developing their computational thinking skills so they're able to think logically and problem solve in a better way. Knowing that I'm preparing the next generation for technology that's not even thought of yet makes me proud to learn alongside my students. Yes!